Reports also say the Brow is waiving his $4 million trade bonus. That means LeBron's squad now has $32 million available in cap space and can sign a max player like, hey, Kwai or Kyrie when free agency starts on Sunday. We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Chris Broussard. Good morning. Happy Friday. How do you think the Lakers should spend their money? Well, the first thing, if I were running the Lakers, I think the player that fits with LeBron and AD better than any player on the planet, better than any star out there, Clay Thompson. is Klay Thompson. <laughs> I would get LeBron on the horn. Now, I don't think they're going to get him. But I would get him on the horn. I would talk to Michael Thompson, who would love for Clay to be a Laker. Like, Clay would be perfect with AD and LeBron. I mean, he breaks Steph's record of full six. He'd break that. Oh, my God. The looks he gonna get. It would be incredible. Now, again, I don't think it's going to happen. But that would be my first thing. I would get it out to him. We want you number one above anybody. Would Clay would you leave take? on the table? Is it another... 50-ish, 50-ish, right. yep. but, but here's the thing. Yeah, I, so I don't think it's going to happen. The I only think, way he would entertain that if they don't offer him the max. That's what he's saying, right. That's what he's saying. I, but I would try to get word to him before that, would you even consider it? Because you're our number one guy. Now, I don't think he'd do it, but that would be number one. Number right. two, Kawhi's a no-brainer. All right, he's so good. I don't worry about how they would fit. It'd just be... So good. They would just win it because those three players are so good. So it's good, Skip. Three of the what? Top 10, ten, ten top, players okay, let's, let's whatever. Say ten. That's not like 10, mm. but we think we got three of the top And seven. defensively... Wait a second. Tell me when it's my turn, please. I'll just wait over I'm gonna here. I'm going to let you go after Chris. I've got many more. It's still Chris's turn. It's still Chris's turn. All right. They, defensively, with Kawhi and AD, it'd be, it'd be crazy. Now, they also would max Kawhi, uh, Kyrie. I don't know that I would, but they would max Kyrie. You would not. Why? Here, I would, if they, I just think if, look, it worked so well together with LeBron and Kyrie, but the reason it worked well in Cleveland was because Kevin Love stepped back. Right. Now, looking at those three with AD, who's stepping back? Nobody, neither one, of, none of those guys is going to play the Kevin Love, Chris Bosh role. Right. So what I would want is LeBron to look at this latter stage of his career as the Magic Johnson right. era. And he should be the playmaker setting up Kyrie, setting up AD. Not, I think AD should probably lead him in scoring. Maybe Kyrie's even second. Maybe. LeBron probably would end up being second just because he gets points. But that if they do that, I think it could work. Otherwise, it'd be a challenge just because the three games don't perfectly fit together. So... I, I I would not go for Kyrie. I don't think they're getting any of the three, Clay, Kawhi, or Kyrie. Hmm. The other guy, they, this is how they view D'Angelo Russell. They don't want to max him, but they feel like if Kyrie goes to Brooklyn, then D'Angelo will get renounced, and then they, try, they will try to get him for less than the max, 22, 23 million, hmm. something like that. I think hmm. what they should do if they don't get Clay or Ky, Kawhi is just go get three guys. I'm looking at Brooke Lopez. I'm looking at Patrick Beverly. I'm looking at Seth Curry. I'm hey. looking at Terrence Rock. Like, those are the guys. You need depth. Your first two are so good. And Kuzma is a, can, play, can be the third guy. So that's how I would do it if I'm the Lakers. I just think Clay and Kawhi are so good. Just take them and figure it out. But, but you're saying that's not going to happen anyway. Yeah, I don't, right? I don't think they get Clay, Kawhi, or Kyrie. Now, of the three of those... This will surprise you. I think the best chance is Kawhi, actually. Hmm. Because unless... Kyrie could be in an interesting situation. I don't think the Lakers are that high on his list at this point. But if Brooklyn doesn't get KD, and they say, you know what? We're not going to take Kyrie by himself. If New York doesn't get KD and says... Nah, we, first of all, we know we're your second chance, second choice to Brooklyn. Secondly, we're not sure. We're not going to take that chance either and take you. Then where does Kyrie go? Mm. That's where the Lakers become, I think, potential for Kyrie. But mm. I don't think they get any, either of those three. So I think you build, you go get three guys with mm. the money. Mm. Take it away. No, you go. No, no, you go ahead. Because I know you chomping at the bit. You don't want Lakers to be doing anything anyway. So, my friend Chris Bouchard <laughs> just said that it would be a no-brainer to go after number two if you're the Los Angeles Lakers. You said that, right? Yes. No-brainer. And yes. you said it'd be over. Without question. It would be he, over. He predicted. 75 and 7. It might be. 75 and 7. <laughs>
75 and well, 7, <laughs> even though we got load management. Right, it'd be a lot of place. load management yeah. up in there. Okay, but, but they're so good. The championship. Them, that that, 75 okay, 68 games. 14. Okay, they, 16, they, 14. Okay, my bad, 16 14. They could all the bottom turns. line is championship. They could take turns playing yeah. solo nights, and they'd go 68. No, we always go have two or three in the lineup. Okay, two out of three and 68 and 14. Here's my problem with your premise of no-brainer. You would also have no closer. There's no closer among those three. LeBron failed miserably trying to close games early last year, and even you have admitted that at times on this show because he is a lousy late-game free-throw shooter. Okay. Am I right? Free throws, yes. Free throws. Well, we know he yeah. has closed games okay. with shots. I, I I don't know many because he's <laughs> now played 16 years, and, and he went 15 years. Well, we go back one, yeah. Well, actually, 14. He went 14 years having closed light with, with walk-off shots. He had two in 14 years. That's pathetically bad given the many attempts that he passed up because he was a, he, he passed but he made the right play you guys always said because he was afraid to have to go to that free throw line because the, he knew he was going to get fouled am I right about that no no he, he I is don't agree. not a closer <laughs> and I, I've told you again and again I know Kyrie took a beating last year for what went wrong in Boston he's still to me the best closer in basketball there's nobody I would want with the ball in his hands in the late game situation than Kyrie Irving so I'm opting for Kyrie right now in this situation because if it, a, AD re remember what was he in New Orleans he was 34 games under 500. He has transcendent talent, according to this He game. does. He is P-E-R king or no, prince. No, three all time. Well, yeah. no, three or four all time behind Jordan and LeBron. His record in New Orleans was 216 and 250. So 34 games under 500. Why was that? He just, there's some intangible missing. I've said that for years on TV. He's a, he's a tremendous player. But you need somebody that you say he's our go-to closer. Toronto had Van Vliet. He closed. He made three threes in the fourth quarter of the closeout game because that's who they look to. That's who number two passed to at the end of the game. Remember that? He but said, they, I they, they didn't right? look to Van Vliet. Well, yes, they he did. He just happened because of their egalitarian offense. Egalitarian. Whoever's like in the, the role. That's the first time that word has ever been used <laughs> on this show, and I like it. It's he was just in deep. the right place, and Kawhi doesn't Beautiful. dominate the ball, right. so... Right. He, he you, got his you guys give number two the biggest pass because he is not a close. He never was in San Antonio, and that was a reason they didn't offer him the max. A reason, along with his constant injuries, but he wasn't the go-to fourth quarter guy that you give the max to. I'm just you, you got to give me a second here. I'm just, I'm going to run down what just happened in these playoffs. Everybody gave him a pass for this, and it drives me crazy. He failed miserably in fourth quarter after fourth quarter after fourth quarter against Philly. Go back and look this up. Game two, fourth quarter, they lost the game. He was 0 for 3. Game three, fourth quarter, 0 for 2 in the fourth quarter. They lost that game. Let's go to Milwaukee. Game one, loss, 0 for 3 from the floor in the fourth quarter. Game two, loss, 1 for 4 from the floor in the fourth quarter. This is supposed to be a guy you guys say He's dominating. He's transcended. He's the MVP, the runaway MVP of the playoffs. What he happened was. in game three? They go back to Toronto. This is against Milwaukee. Do you remember what happened? The final 113 of the fourth quarter, they had a five-point lead, and all they need to do is for him to close it. And Milwaukee scores five quick points to send it to overtime because number two didn't even get a shot up in the last 113. And then what they do? Okay. He then, took over. Okay. He took over, says Shannon Sharp. And that's why you're giving him a pass. You're sweeping it under the carpet. First overtime of game three. This is the turning point game of that series for them. What did he do in the first overtime? He missed two shots to win the game at the end of the game. Do you remember that? The yeah, finals, 113, um, uh, he, he missed, uh, I'm sorry, th this is the first overtime. He missed two shots to win the game. Yeah, I remember. All that. right? So then we go to... Second overtime. Game six, it, well, then Giannis fouled out. Remember, he fouled out with like seconds into the last... He didn't have one over that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you tell me, sweep that under the road. Giannis fouled out. We fouled okay. him. All right? Well, then Milwaukee just gave up. You could just see, they're, they're like, we lost him. And the, I don't know if he fouled out all year, did he? I don't think he did. Uh, Okay, game six, the closeout win against Milwaukee. He goes one for four from three in the fourth quarter. Now we go to the finals. The game two that they lost at home, fourth quarter, 
Clay goes down with a hamstring with eight minutes left, and Steph <laughs> down the stretch goes 0 for 0 and 0 for 0 from the line. He can't even get a shot up. What does number two do down the stretch? He goes in the fourth quarter, 1 for 6 from the floor and 0 for 3 from 3. And you guys are praising him like he's the greatest thing that ever came along. And then guess what he really? said? Remember when Nick uh, Nurse said, guys, all uh, we have to do is go to, go after it, go to Golden State, and mm. win one of these games, mm. and we're back on. Kawhi okay. Stillman said, F it. Yeah. Okay. Let's get both of them. Okay. Now, if Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant had said that, we'd have been heaping praise on them. Did Clay play in game three? He no. played in well, game four. Well, here's the thing, too. What if Ka you gave the stats for Kawhi when Clay got hurt? If, Clay, if Kawhi had dominated, you wouldn't have given him credit because you would have said Clay is out. Did he dominate? Did, no, but did he, did he smell he, blood and take what, over? What game nope. was it when he when he scored ten points in mm. two minutes in the fourth quarter? Okay, game five. Game he five. goes right. on a flurry and he has a great flurry. And then what happened? With three twenty eight left in that game, he made his last shot. And then down the stretch, he goes zero for two, shooting an air ball jumper. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And then he had a three to win the game with one ten left to put them ahead. Right. And he missed that three. And those are the only two shots he took down the stretch until the last shot, and he turned it down because it looked like a double team was coming. Yep. It Remember? was a just, double just team. Drive it. He made just the right pass. Just drive it. What about game four? Chris, you want to talk about game four when he had that 17 to third? Right. Hey, but it, right. it was a blowout. It was a blowout. We, we blew him out. Because That's not closing. That has nothing to do with closing. Then I'm going to finish up. 12. The game, game six. is also 48 Game six minutes is long. the closeout game. They lose Kevin Durant with a ruptured Achilles. They lose Clay Thompson with a wrecked knee. And then what happens in the fourth quarter? It's still a seesaw game. He goes 0 for 4 and 0 for 2 from 3 in the fourth quarter. You like that? It's just again what, and again. What, what about, about the game seven buzzer beater? He's not a buzzer beater. Not you, a can't, you can't it's write not that a off buzzer beater. It's the luckiest shot in you the You can't write it off like that, Skip. It went in. How many, Period. How many corner threes that hit the front iron go in? I, I can't I remember one. I know one. Yeah, I okay. know one. You know one because it was matters. incredibly, <laughs> it was blessed by the gods. It was. Well, it maybe was he'll hand be of blessed in L.A. or in the Lakers. I've never seen I've never seen a shot like that. In, in all, I've covered basketball way longer than you have, and you guys can put your basketball together, and you can't come up with how much basketball I've watched. I've never seen a corner three go in like that in my you life. You Kawhi shoot one. It bounced high off the front iron. I thought it was going to hit the floor, and you admitted you thought it was just going to drop right on the floor. Maybe. And then it caught iron a second time, and somehow it weirdly hops across the rim all the way to the, the far iron, and it bounces, and it bounces again, and then it falls in. It's called touch. Oh, it's touch. It's like English. Four bounce touch? Yep. Yes. Didn't Kawhi yes. tell you he practiced that shot growing up? I, you know what? <laughs> I, I could give him 10,000 shots from the corner, and he couldn't repeat that shot. No. 10,000. Yeah. I don't know what you saw the best shooter ever, Steph Curry, miss a three pointer at the end of game six. Right. He has never it been clutch. He has never been clutch. We're going to talk about that in the, a minute. The best shooters will hit 50% okay. of their three points. The best. I mean, not even 50%. Did so, Ray Allen's shot that shot me right in the heart in game six, 2013, did it hit the front iron? I, no, I it hit it nothing but matter net. what it, it hit, net. as long as it goes through. Net. It really doesn't matter. Gentlemen, Skip, we have Skip to says leave if you this practice a shot, you got to practice the way you made the shot. <laughs> so you got to practice hitting the front iron, the back iron, the middle iron. Oh, if Clyde hadn't made Lord that have shot, have what would y'all argue about every know. morning? All right, well, we're so. going to move on. Chris, we're going to ask you to stick around with us for one more session. Does Steph Curry get Here the respect go. he deserves? I have a feeling that'll be just as fiery as this discussion, and that's up next.